Uh, welcome to this uh, lecture number 29 of the course computational hydraulics. Uh, we are in module uh, number 2 numerical methods and in this particular lecture class I will be discussing uh, algebraic equation gauss seidel method. This is again another iterative method uh, like our Jacobi method discussed in unit number 24. Now uh, what is the learning objective? At the end of this unit, students will be able to apply gauss seidel method for iterative solution and uh, they will be able to apply successive over relaxation for gauss seidel iteration. Now, uh, in general uh, like our Jacobi method, uh, we have our general structure we are considering the full matrix here, we are not uh, dividing it uh, or we are not storing it in reduced form. Uh, so, let us start uh, with the basic steps. Basic steps, this is similar to or exactly uh, first steps are similar, exactly similar to our uh, Jacobi method. We will divide our A matrix into lower uh, diagonal upper. This lower one is strictly lower, diagonal is only diagonal terms and upper is with uh, strictly upper uh, matrix. Uh, so, now uh, if we consider the overall calculation uh, again L D U, uh, this can be multiplied because this whole thing is A. Uh, but in this process, uh, we can divide uh, this into two parts. In case of uh, our Jacobi iteration, we have seen that this is d into phi p plus l plus u into phi p minus 1 this r. Uh, this was there, but in this case uh, we are considering the lower diagonal or lower triangular matrix here and we are updating it. So, L plus d and u is there. So, phi again uh, it is a available value. Uh, and in this process, uh, we can uh, write the final form L plus d this inverse into u phi p minus 1, this uh, term is there uh, like our Jacobi iteration technique. But the big difference is uh, the inclusion of L term which is the lower part or updated part of uh, the matrix. Now, uh, this will be clear with example. So, in gauss seidel uh, we uh, let us say that we will apply the same uh, example with matrix 5 by 5 matrix, uh, 5 by 5 matrix. Now, in this case uh, again we can write our coefficient as lower, strictly lower diagonal, uh, strictly upper diagonal. Uh, up to this, we are not disturbing any element within the A matrix and will not disturb. Uh, iteration starts with guess value. Now, in iteration 1, uh, this is clear uh, that for row 1, whatever available value that starting from 2, starting from 2 to 5 is available from previous iteration. So, except this diagonal term, we are uh, calculating uh, this updated value based on previous time level value. But uh, interesting uh, feature is there for row 2. Now, 
uh, we have this phi 2 calculation and in phi 2 calculation uh, we can omit this 2 term, but we have already one updated value available for phi 1 from row 1. So, this comes directly from the iteration 1 or present iteration level. So, R 2 minus A 2 1. So, A 2 1 is the coefficient of our uh, lower triangular matrix. It is clear that is why we are including the lower triangular matrix and we can see that uh, we are writing it with uh, present time level uh, or uh, present time level not from the previous time level. That is why L plus D uh, into phi p was written in our calculation process. Now, if you write the third one again we have two values uh, available for uh, updating phi 3 this is j uh, 1 and j 2 and starting from j 4 to 5 we are utilizing previous time level value. Uh, uh, interesting part is that phi 1 we have changed color phi j we have changed color because we are getting updated values and we are utilizing the updated values in the calculation. So, red color indicates that we are using updated values within the calculation process, but, but blue values we are not changing the coefficients or the right hand side vector. Uh, Gauss Siddle uh, example again fourth, uh, fifth. Uh, in the fifth one uh, except this fifth one all values are updated ones. So, uh, starting from 1 to 4 uh, we have all values are updated ones. Uh, in case of fourth one except one all are updated ones. So, uh, in iteration 2 again uh, if we consider the same thing. Uh, you will find that uh, this is same, uh, we are using the present uh, available value at the present iteration level itself. So, anyway uh, we are providing updated information to the uh, algorithm. So, that is why uh, obviously, we expect that uh, the performance will be better compared to our Jacobi technique, where we are we are utilizing uh, the previous time level, uh, previous iteration level value or guess value uh, at the beginning steps. So, row 3, uh, row 5 uh, again uh, this approach is similar. Now, if we generalize the algorithm uh, this becomes like this. Uh, except that ith term that means up to i minus 1 uh, we have already calculated the updated value. So, j starting from i minus 1 we are using updated value and from i plus 1 to n we are using previous time level value. Now, like our previous uh, Jacobi method we can add phi i p minus 1. So, we can just phi add phi i p minus 1 and we can write this as residual again. So, whatever value uh, is available either in updated form or in non updated form, uh, we can calculate the right hand side minus left hand side. So, this is our residual and divided by the diagonal uh, coefficient of the diagonal term this is a 1 1. So, uh, we can we can uh, use this concept where we are updating the uh, variable values 
uh, at the current time steps. So, obviously convergence will be better uh, like our uh, previous Jacobi iteration uh, we can utilize residual error for this one uh, maximum absolute error or RMSE uh, for this purpose where uh, epsilon max uh, these are actually our allowable uh, epsilon values. Now, in this case uh, we need again this diagonal dominance uh, without diagonal dominance uh, this convergence is not uh, possible. Uh, another method uh, we can apply that is it is called as successive over uh, relaxation uh, relaxation. So, uh, we can uh, apply this method and in successive uh, over relaxation uh, uh, we can uh, uh, control the update uh, using a gauss seidel step. So, let us say that this is phi p uh, phi p minus phi p minus 1. So, uh, this omega is there into this phi gauss seidel step whatever we are getting minus phi p that is old value this step. So, we will take uh, a smaller step compared to uh, the original smaller or larger step or uh, compared to uh, the proposed modification uh, from the gauss seidel step. So, if we directly uh, write it in iterative form, so by transferring this part in the right hand side we can write omega into g s uh, plus 1 minus omega into phi p minus 1. So, in this case in this case uh, we can uh, use the gauss seidel approximation. In gauss seidel approximation uh, uh, what uh, we are getting? We are getting this d plus l. So, uh, right hand side uh, right hand side uh, we are uh, writing this for lower triangular one uh, we are transferring. Now, in this case uh, if we multiply d uh, with uh, this uh, side uh, on both sides then we can uh, get this form. This is actually our uh, desired uh, level into d, but this d is our gauss seidel step like this. So, omega into this gauss seidel step plus 1 minus omega d phi p minus 1. So, if we rearrange this what we are getting from this two terms we are getting this first term this is our diagonal 1 and this part is coming from here and omega into r this is our constant term. Although uh, omega value may, may vary, but uh, we can use a fixed value for iteration. So, rearrangement yields uh, this one we can change the side uh, uh, as per our desired one d plus l that inverts. Uh, we need to utilize for gauss seidel but in this case uh, uh, we are not utilizing this one we are multiplying this omega uh, we are, we are a bit cautious we are reducing or uh, increasing step so finally in matrix form this can be written like this but implementation wise uh, we already have information about this system. 
Now, this is in compact form uh, from our Gauss Siddle. This is our actually Gauss Siddle step. Now, with this, if we proceed uh, and if we uh, write uh, in this format so that we can achieve convergence by increasing or decreasing the time step, uh, we can simply input this value here and rewrite this. So, final form uh, is omega into uh, residual i. So, a i i this is our general form and omega is uh, written here. So, uh, rearrangement yields uh, that phi i equals to old value plus residual i a i i omega. So, in a way uh, this value omega varies between 0 to 2. Now, if we have uh, 0 to 1 we call it as uh, under relaxation that means whatever value is coming here, coming here we are reducing that value, we are reducing that value under relaxation and over relaxation if it is between uh, 1 to 2. But virtually what is happening we are playing with the diagonal term. If we rewrite this thing like this, this is a i i divided by omega. So, in case of under relaxation we are uh, actually increasing the uh, diagonal uh, term and in case of over relaxation uh, we are reducing the diagonal term. So, by changing this omega values we can uh, control the convergence for uh, a Gauss Riddle uh, over relaxation uh, uh, SOR method. Now, let us consider our standard example in this case. Uh, in this case, uh, if we have Gauss Riddle uh, uh, up to this, this is general, uh, we are uh, again utilizing count RMSC phi phi initial guess. So, uh, epsilon max omega, omega means um, now we need to provide this omega value for this case. Now, this is count equals to 0, RMSE equals to 1 uh, to execute this while loop and phi equals to phi o. That means, previously uh, in Jacobi iteration we were using phi o or old values only. Now, whatever value is updated we will directly try to utilize it. So, that is why I have transferred this value here directly in phi. Now, I am directly updating this phi. So, updating uh, and we are multiplying this omega, this residual, residual i again starting with r i minus a i j and phi j and this is for all uh, uh, all j that means whether it is uh, for lower or upper triangular matrix uh, whatever may be the coefficient uh, whatever value is available uh, with uh, present or uh, past uh, iteration level we are utilizing that information. Now, uh, with this uh, I am also calculating RMSE, RMSE again omega because this is actually uh, the increment that we are giving for two iterations uh, between two iterations. So, uh, again uh, this RMSE equals to RMSE divided by n and we are taking square root. So, this is the actual calculation and count equals to count plus 1 and with this uh, this while loop ends and this is our algorithm. 
uh, compared to uh, our direct uh, solvers like LU decomposition or Gauss elimination, we need to write less number of lines for this one. Uh, in case of uh, this our standard problem, uh, we can uh, we can uh, use uh, this concept uh, of our case and in this case uh, let us say that A1 this is for diagonally dominant our standard matrix. So, uh, let us start with A1 and R1, R1 now omega equals to 1, omega equals to 1 means we are at Gauss's serial step, we are not using SOR that means over relaxation or under relaxation. So, in this case omega is 1, this means we are at uh, under relaxation uh, at exactly Gauss Siddle step. So, let us take this uh, phi O is our initial value uh, as 0, epsilon max is uh, 1 into 10 to the power minus 6. If we calculate this, uh, we will exactly get this 13579, uh, this is our exact solution and interestingly uh, RMSE value is coming close to 0 and with 5 iterations only we are getting this thing. And uh, uh, if we consider our uh, under relaxation, let us say or over relaxation. Uh, the this one uh, 0.5, then uh, what is happening here? If 0.5, 1.5, we need 38 iterations, and if we have 0.5, that is under relaxation, uh, then we need uh, 30 iteration for this one and this uh, values are close. For this one uh, within 5 iteration with Gauss Siddle we are getting the solution, but if you have a large matrix and sparse matrix uh, we need uh, and then uh, the utility of this approach will be uh, very much visible. Now, uh, if we consider our second uh, matrix which is uh, not diagonally dominant and we utilize our this algorithm that means uh, this is A2 and R2 uh, only changes in terms of A2 R2 we are keeping the initial value epsilon max and omega is same. So, uh, if we do that you can easily see that solutions are not converging, RMSC equals to NAN although these many iterations uh, are there uh, we are not getting converged solution for this one. So, uh, we can uh, infer that uh, our diagonal dominance is very much required for this iterative system, otherwise we will not get solution from this uh, system of equations. So, with this uh, we can uh, end our uh, successive uh, GS uh, SOR methods and next uh, lecture will devote with nonlinear uh, iterative techniques. Thank you.